Let me now introduce the next speaker. So Eric Ekoden, the CTO from Ericsson, and Savinai Berry, who is the EVP product and engineering for Vonage. Um, thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Well, as a mobile industry, we have uh, started to see the benefits of 5G in all kinds of environments beyond the smartphone, fixed wireless access, getting these remote and home workers to use 5G as their primary access, the gamers, many other groups are starting to use 5G as this uh, tool, the innovation platform and the digitalization tool. But uh, to a large extent, we're still using the network as a static resource. We can provision slicing and we can provide a subscription that is offering better quality or some guaranteed service. But uh, where we are moving, and certainly the mobile industry is very familiar with that, is to move towards real-time control and dynamic behavior of the network. And of course, programmability is a key part of that. So uh, let's just uh, start with uh, one of the obvious examples needing this dynamism. See if you can. If we would offer these kind of enhanced performance services all the time, everywhere, in all tricky situations, it wouldn't really be possible from a mobile network infrastructure perspective. In fact, we need to have the dynamic handling of the network performance. And, and that's really where the network platform and the network API comes in. In our consumer research and enterprise research, we see that there is a willingness to use 5G services with higher, perhaps differentiated quality and pay more. We're talking about 20% more, maybe 30% more, in some cases even more for a service that is providing the right latency, for example in the game, or the right kind of quality of service with a QOD, uh, APIs of course, to that uh, high, high definition interactive video service. There is no question that the network, and we've learned that over the last two, three years, has a extremely important role to play in user experience, but also in, the fact, in, uh, in terms of actually providing a decent service. So the way we look at this, this is really about combining the learnings from the era of exposing relatively basic communication APIs. Think of them as uh, the, the classical CPaaS APIs, the text, uh, the voice, uh, some video, over-the-top video services. These are APIs that have taught developers how to get access to some of the network services. But now we're expanding this with network API services, such as advanced authentication, quality of service with a QOD API, location, and, and many, many more. Of course, this is about finally getting all the power of the network capabilities at the fingertips of the developers. We know this from a technology point of view, and what we are adding now is the ability to reach out to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of developers, and have the consistency across networks, across the world, and having the simple business model built into actually using and integrating those APIs. This is really about taking the next step also on the business model side and on the monetization side. Technology is there to a large extent already standardized, built into the products, built into the deployed 5G networks. Now it needs to come together. It needs to be harmonized. The Camara part and the Open Gateway Initiative are really driving this, but it also needs to reach the developers. No matter whether you're developing an app for India, or for North America, or for Europe, or Northeast Asia, there should be consistency and simplicity in this. We're very happy to be part of the announcement uh, that took place earlier today. In fact, uh, working together with Telefonica, with Orange and Vodafone has helped us tremendously to realize the needs. Here we're working in Spain, but we believe it's important to expand this in other regions, geographies. And it's also, of course, showing that if you go together and if you are coming with an attractive QOD 
offering towards gamers, like the cloud-based gaming provided by Blacknut that was part of this in our case, or the high-definition uh, interactive video communication, like you, you see with the Zoom example that we are showing together, or Vonage, if you, you like that as well. That is just showing that these APIs are already giving value in these sectors, the advanced cloud gaming and in the productivity space. And of course, there's so much more to come when we drive this on a global scale. And speaking of developers, I think as an industry, and I'm a proud veteran of the industry, we of course realize and know the extreme importance of developers. At the same time, we have a hard time really presenting APIs in an easy to consume, a simple way, something that includes the monetization and the business model around that, but also works wide enough. So that's why I want to bring up my colleague, head of product in, in Vonage, Savinai Berry. Why don't you join me? Good, Thanks, good. Eric. Yeah. Developers. Developers. Yeah, right. what well, do they really? 5G developers, Savinai. 5G developers. Is yeah. there something called a 5G developer? I don't know. Is there something called a 5G developer? Last time I checked, I didn't think so. I don't think there are anybody out there who say that they are developing 5G. But anyways, well, let's have a conversation about it. So by the way, how many people in the audience from a carrier, operator, service provider, just as by a show of hands, just roughly, just to get a sense of who we have here? Awesome. A few. Very cool. Very cool. Just a few of us. That's, that's fantastic. So um, here's the discussion, right? We talked a lot about, I mean, Ishra talked a lot about the developers in the beginning. How, does, how do you look at the developers? But let's go back, let's rewind for a second uh, to 2015 and 2016, when the first time 3GPP announced the specification for the network exposure function and the service exposure function. The service uh, exposure function was, I think, in release 15, and I think the network exposure function was in release 16. That was six, seven years ago. Mm. That was the first time that there was a standard inside the network which allowed you to access the latent benefits of the network. So you could look at what sits inside it, whether it's quality of service, whether it's location, stuff that you and I use on a daily basis. It's been seven years. Mm. What happened? Nothing really happened at scale. The, ser the service was there underneath, but nothing was really developed at scale. Why? I think Ishwar hit at that point earlier in the beginning. Because while all of these capabilities are there, how do you take those capabilities, the complexity of the network, and make it really simple for somebody to go access it? Because why? There are no 5G developers, but they are web developers, mobile developers, and yes, in the future, potentially, there's going to be some metaverse or XR type developers, no question about it. Now, these developers are looking for just a simple way to integrate what they do on a regular basis. If you're building an app for an app store, if you're creating a web app, all they know is how to access those mobile and web SDKs the software development kits. That's all they know. And they just want to earn money. So now if you can provide the access to some of these capabilities like quality of service or location to them in a way they know best, they can earn more money. They earn more money, we all mm. get more money and more value. Let me take a concrete example. You have uh, one of our customers is a company um, in the telehealth space. Telehealth, as we all know, over the last few years really grew into a much bigger category. Why? Because of COVID. And each of us wanted to have that conversation with that doctor and the patient. And we were mobile sometimes when we were walking around or when we, we were in the car, and we wanted to have that conversation. Well, what happened was over the last two or three years, because of that amount of traffic, those people who were sitting in the cars trying to have a conversation with their doctor, they had glitches. And when they had glitches, if the doctor was telling you something for a minute or two and you couldn't hear it, that's kind of a problem. You want to be able to hear what the, what the doctor is telling you for that 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so. So now imagine if the quality of service is something that's built into that experience. And some, now that there's a glitch, boom, right away. That can be fixed within the context of that connection. Now track me all the way back. Where does that quality of service come from? It comes from the network. Who exposes it in the network? Well, the exposure functions expose it. How do you catch that? You catch that using a platform, a CPaaS platform in this case. And then how do you provide it to the end user? Now, what's the economic value? Again, we talked about the, the, the models. We charge today, as an example, about, you know, call it 0 0.004 cents per minute for a video API. It's a video API function. Imagine now having a 20, 30% more addition for just that one function of quality of service. You do that, guess who benefits out of that incremental 20 or 30%? Everybody in that entire value chain, including the carrier service providers. 
So there's value for everybody. So suddenly the, the model shifts from the CSPs and, and yourselves to becoming just a termination point to now participating in the economic value for every API consumed. And millions of APIs over millions of customers worldwide. That's the opportunity we have in front of us. Yeah, great. You want to comment on a few of the ongoing activities there? A couple of the other examples. You'll see these uh, charts. These are the kind of uh, use cases we're already seeing. Uh, authentication, big deal. We used 2FA today, uh, this two-factor authentication. The challenge with two-factor authentication is it's kind of a clunky experience. You try to figure out what your six-digit passport was when you try to enter it somewhere else, and you sometimes forget about it. Well, can we use the thing that we know the most which identifies who we are, our mobile number? And can we do it in a way which is secure and also provide the authentication in places like connected vehicles, education, for any authentication at all? That's the power of the network, making it super simple for uh, people to access it through these network-based APIs. So I think uh, there's no question that this, uh, this crowd in particular is uh, on the same track. I think we all work together to manage the sort of complexity, but also hide it from these developers. There's no question that there is a demand out there. And I think that working together across the industry, working with the base of everything that's in the network, which of course is the ownership of, of the operators, working through abstractions and working with simplicity at the highest level, also for the network APIs, that, that's the way to go. There's that's no exactly way to right. do it alone. Yeah. I think uh, with that, uh, there was one last slide here, which is really about this, that uh, now we finally have, I think, the tools, both on the technology, the industry side. Of course, there is a lot of expectations on all of us, but we have a possibility to now close these gaps, making sure it's monetizable, making sure it's available rapidly across all 5G networks, 4G networks for that matter as well, but certainly all high-performance 5G networks that are being rolled out right now. So I think good starting point, and of course, building on the knowledge of what the developers actually need from the network. Big thank you all. Thank you. Aha, Carolina. Thank you very much. So you talked, uh, you talked about the time. You talked about the timeline. You talked yeah. about this not being so, uh, so new in terms of network ecosystem. So tell us why now, why the time is now? Yeah, it's a good question. Guys. And I think, think, of, uh, think of it this way, that um, the, the availability of these services were there for a long time. The intent by, I think, a lot of the carrier service providers were there to do something, but the missing link was how do you make it simple mm. and really easy for those APIs to be accessed in such a way that the end developers and enterprises can access and use it for real value. It's not technology for the sake of technology. That doesn't help anybody. It has to provide real value. And I think now with the platform that we talked about, that can be used as a way to provide that simple access for use cases today at scale globally, which I think can make a massive difference in the value chain. I think that's a good, good summary um, because it, it is really about the timing for mm. getting to scale. It's not about all the efforts that have been put in, but now it's, it's possible to do it at scale, do it globally. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Good. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.